What is up, Aquarius? How are you guys doing? It is time to look at your mid-month messages for April 2024. So when I do mid-month readings, what I am looking for is I'm looking to see if there has been a change of timeline. Change of timelines. That's what we're checking on here today. So for those of you who would like to find out how to schedule a personal reading, all the information on how you can go about doing that is down there in the description box of this video. And speaking of personal readings, for those of you catching this on time, tomorrow, Thursday, April 18th, we are going to be doing another round of the $22.22 live mini readings. So if you go to my website, tarotwithrich.com, and click on personal readings, you will see that that is now an option that is available. I can't promise you when we're going to do it next. I really don't know. I want to do it as much as possible, but, you know, you never know. So, all right. All the information is in the description of the video, y'all. All right, let's jump into this. First thing I'm opening this up with is the next person coming in. Let's see if we're still on the same timeline, Aquarius. What's coming in next? Are we still on the same timeline? Or did timelines change? If they change, did they change for the better or for the worse? Oh, some of y'all got a Leo headed your way. Possibly, but I don't know. Let me see here. Let's see what we got. Hmm, <clears throat> ten of wands. Okay. Oh, that's good. That's good. We got that ten of cups, though. So, this is right in the heart of the spread, too. So, spoiler alert. I think this is going to be long-term and successful. However, we do have that nine of wands, ten of wands there. So this kind of feels fresh. This kind of feels fresh to me, almost like this person is either fresh out of a relationship or something very recently happened in their love life that was negative. Hang on a second. I'll be right back. Hang on. Yeah, something just freshly happened to this person, I think. They got their guard up. They're carrying baggage. And again, I'm, this feels fresh to me. It doesn't have to be for all of you, but this feels like something just recently happened to this person. There's going to be some... See, what past energy, man. I always try to steer around it every single time. Every time I read a new connection, past energy comes in with it. And I try to steer around it, and I try to steer around it, but it, it just won't let me. It won't let me. This is all past energetic and vibrational baggage. Okay. But like I said, this is more than likely going to be long-term and successful. So, spoiler alert. I don't think, big picture, there's anything you're going to have to be worried about. It just might be kind of bumpy in the beginning. Lover's card, Ten of Cups. Beautiful. Let's see this person's energy. Their energy, feelings, intentions. Not really telling me a whole lot about this situation. I'm trying to dig a little bit deeper. It's not really letting me. What's this person's true feelings, energy, and intentions? Ten of Cups. Pretty damn simple. Hang on. Page of Pentacles. Okay. All right. So there's one thing about this person that I think is really going to stand out to you. And that is they are so tired of playing games that they're not afraid to walk away. 
And I know that may kind of sound a little bit negative. It, to, to say that, it may kind of sound negative, but when you meet somebody like that, in a way, it's kind of like a breath of fresh air because if, if you meet somebody who is so sick of playing games that they ain't afraid to walk away from you, then you know that they're not full of shit. You know they're being serious. <clears throat> so, yeah. This person wants the real deal. This, this per Honestly, you know what? The, the, another weird thing about this. This person seems very simple. They don't seem very mysterious. Uh, they don't seem very complex and convoluted. And again, that may be another thing that kind of sounds bad saying it, but when you meet somebody who's very like an open book, like, like it's not, it's not complicated with me. I'm an open book. Here's me. This is who I am. This is what I'm about. Take it or leave it. Very simple. When you're, when you're faced with that, that can be like, well, fuck, beautiful, beautiful, fine. Like somebody that's not so complicated and mysterious and I can't figure out what's going on with you. You're acting different today than you were yesterday. And, and how are you going to be acting tomorrow? You know, that you know, people who are real complex and confusing. This person's not very confusing. They're not very complex. They're very simple. But they are protecting their heart. This person is not playing games. And it kind of feels to me like this person has a very low tolerance for games and bullshit. And again, breath of fresh air. Okay, looks pretty good, man. It's just, it's kind of weird whenever you, when you read energy that's simple like this and you're trying to dig and I'm trying to dig a little bit deeper and it's not really letting me go any deeper. It's just very simple. Let's see how it plays out for the first month. How's it playing out for the first month? Next person coming in for Aquarius. Ace of Cups, no confusion, no ambiguity, no complex, convoluted, confusing. This is a start of a whole new cycle. It's going to be very, very apparent. This is See, this doesn't happen like this very often. Very frequently when it's time to start a new cycle. It's kind of a slow, gradual transition from one cycle to the next. Very rarely... Is it like overnight? You know, like your life changes overnight. And I think that's what this is going to be. It's not, you're not going to have to sit around and wonder. You're going to know, dude, this is the start of a whole new chapter. Starting today, everything fucking changes. And yeah, so it might be a little bit bumpy in the beginning, just dealing with your own emotions and your own fears and your own insecurities and you know wondering mainly i think the majority of the bumps in the road are going to be in your own head the majority of them so is there any advice here any advice so i i don't know who needs to hear this but don't just turn and run because you get scared i don't know who needs to hear that <laughs> if you get scared of a worst case scenario, don't let yourself get scared and take off running so that you can leave before you get left. I don't know who needs to hear that. I don't think I've ever met an Aquarius that does that, but I don't know. That, that's typically a big fire sign thing. Fire signs normally tend to do that, like Aries and Sagittarius. They, they typically tend to be the ones that get scared, you know, and then they'll leave before you get the chance to leave them just because they don't really know how to think things through very well, you know, and where you do know how to think things through. So I don't know, but maybe maybe there's a couple of you that, that may kind of get intimidated by this connection and 
get scared thinking that you're going to get ghosted and you are thinking, should I do the ghosting first? No, don't do that. Don't do that. You are not being punked. Ashton Kutcher is not going to jump out of the bushes and punk you. This is the real deal. Don't take off running. Relax. You know, whenever, and see, that's another reason why very frequently cycles slowly transition from one cycle to the next is because it can be so shocking and scary when it happens, you know? As much as we think we want that, when it happens, it can scare the shit out of you. But that's what I think is happening here. Just relax and roll with it, dude. Relax and roll with it. All right. Let's look at the person from the past. Person from the past. How's the timeline looking between Aquarius and the person from the past? Seven of Pentacles reversed. Okay, but the death is reversed too. So you're kind of in this weird place in your mind where you know that holding on to this is a waste of time, but you can't let it go at the same time. Um, there, there, well, there could end up being communication here between the two of you, but I don't see the two of you coming together. Possible communication, possible conversation could possibly happen here, but I don't really see the two of you actually coming together. Maybe that's what it is that, um, that makes you realize that this is just a waste of time. Maybe you have a conversation with this person and maybe they just do that one thing or say that one thing that just makes the light bulb come on in your head and you're like, man, you know what? You ain't nothing but a waste of fucking time, dude. There, like, there, there is no sense in me even wondering what the hell is going on with you, you know? But at the same time, you can't let it go. But you know you should. I'm thinking there's going to be a conversation here. I'm thinking you're going to get to talk to this person. Let's see their energy and their feelings towards you. What's this person's energy and feelings towards Aquarius? How do they see you? How do they feel about you? Hermit reversed. Oops. Knight of Coins. Six of Cups reversed. Two of Swords. Hmm. Okay, ah, I think uh, you intimidate this person a little bit. <clears throat> yeah, Emperor Reverse, you intimidate them a little bit, but there's no way in hell they're going to let you know that with the strength card there. So they do feel unfinished business. They do feel like deep, deep down inside that this probably wasn't supposed to come to an end when it did. I don't think so. Like, especially if they left you. Now, I know it's going to be different for all of you, but specifically to those of you who got left, I think deep down they realize that they probably shouldn't have fucking done that. But they are not going to swallow that ego and let you know that. Ever. 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 Absolutely not. I think they're mainly curious to see how you feel about them. They keep a very close eye on you too, by the way. They be checking up on you every chance they get. Yeah, I, I, I think they're, they're kind of feeling a little bit stupid. 
A little bit dumb. Yeah. If you got left, they know they fucked up. Well, let's see what actions they're taking. Are they reaching out? Are they taking action towards you? Queen of Wands. Well, they're giving you the silent treatment. But still trying to get your attention at the same time. Trying to get your attention, but giving you the silent treatment at the same time. Trying to get a reaction out of you. And they're waiting on you to come forward. Hmm. Yeah, okay. Okay. So it's kind of split here because I feel like there are some of you who are coming forward. That's not all of you. But there's some of you who you are actually going to come forward, I think, and reach out to them, aren't you? Some of you are going to give in and reach out to them. But this person's trying their damnedest not to reach out because they're trying, they want you to reach out to them. So they're holding off as long as they can. Let's get the advice on this situation. Is a conversation with this person a good idea? What would happen? Don't expect this person to be real with you. Don't expect this person to be upfront and honest with you. Don't you show them any emotion. Why not? Why should Aquarius not show them any emotion? Why not? Why not? Devil, Seven of Swords. Just don't expect this person to be real, upfront, and transparent with you. So, I mean, at the end of the day, ah, oh, this is slippery. This is tricky. Hmm. Hmm. This one's tricky, dude. The only thing that I would say, the only thing that I would say is, if you still hold an attachment to this person, if you are hoping that they will come forward and apologize for what they did, open up and be vulnerable with you and be real about how they feel, if you have an expectation, I wouldn't, I wouldn't talk to this person. I would not. But if you can see this person for who they really are, and you think that you could have a conversation with them and see through their bullshit and not get bamboozled by their bullshit. For some of you, maybe a conversation might be a good thing for you. I think the majority of you, though, should probably avoid a conversation with this person during Aries season. During Mercury retrograde. So especially here within the next week and post-shadow. You might want to avoid a conversation with this individual. Wait till the retrograde's over. Let's just put it like that, okay? Wait till the retrograde's over. For those of you thinking about communicating with this person, wait till the retrograde's over. And at least wait until we're one week past post-shadow, okay? Uh, for those of you who end up seeing this person ding in your inbox, if this person shows up in your inbox, wait till the retrograde is over to respond. I don't think communicating with this person during this fucking eclipse Mercury retrograde would be a very smart idea. I don't think so. I don't think so. This has been one of the heaviest fucking periods that we have been in. This Aries season has been heavy. Heavy, heavy. 
I don't, I mean, honestly, I can't think, I can't think of a period that we've had, not even, not even in 2020, do I remember us going through a period that was this heavy, like debilitating heavy. A conversation with a past person who's going to blow smoke up your ass probably isn't a good idea during this fucking eclipse retrograde. Okay. Fucking A, man. All right, let's move forward and see what's happening with the current person. Current person. So if you are not having any issues or problems in your current relationship, this is not for you. This is not your reading. This is only for my sun, moon, rising, and Venus, Aquarian friends, who are experiencing issues problems and challenges in their current relationship. Don't try to force a reading to resonate. That's not your story. I know most of you have common sense, but sorry, there's a couple of you out there that don't, so I have to put it out there. Got to put the disclaimer out there. All right. What's the problem? What's the issue with Aquarius and the current person? Whoop, whoop, whoop. Queen of Swords reversed. That's you, boo-boo. That's you with a bad attitude. Maybe you should have a bad attitude. I don't know. I don't know. But it's definitely shown that you don't have the greatest attitude towards this person. Mm, the devil card. So, yeah, I'm kind of feeling like this already crossed into toxicity. But you do love this person though, don't you? You absolutely do love this person. Some of you could be suspecting, suspecting, okay? Some of you could be suspecting that this person is talking to their ex, maybe? I think there's definitely suspicion of a third party regardless, but the past person card came up right next to it, though. So that's why I say they, you could be suspecting that they're talking to their ex. Seven of Swords, Three of Cups. There's definitely suspicion of a third party and suspicion of infidelity here. Ten of Cups, though. So this is weird. This is really, really weird. Big lack of trust. Some of you could be dealing with a control freak, too. Some of y'all dealing with, like, a toxic fucking control freak. Could be a Capricorn for some of you. Also, I have Aries here. <clears throat> hmm. You don't know what to do, though. You don't know whether or not to hold on and wait to see if things will get better or to just bounce out and dip out. You're not sure. But it's getting to a point, though, where if it doesn't get better sometime soon, you're probably going to throw in the white towel and give up on this. All right. Well, let's see how they feel about you. How's the current person feel about Aquarius? How's the current person feel about Aquarius? Hermit reversed. All right. <clears throat> ah, the death card, man. Could be a Scorpio for some of you. They kind of feel like it's been pretty much over for a while. But with the two of wands, they're kind of feeling the same as you. They don't know. There's a part of them that feels like it's dead and it's done. But they're wondering whether or not they should hold on to hope that things will ever get better. Y'all are mirroring each other. 
I think you're feeling the same way they're feeling. They're feeling the same way you're feeling. Y'all are like mirroring each other directly. That mirroring energy, that can be, there's a time and a place for that. That can be good in many, in, for, for many different types of situations and scenarios. But progressing forward and growing a healthy relationship is not one of those times where mirroring energy is going to, is going to work out very well for you, you know? Lover's card, though. I think there's a part of them that wants to walk away from this, but they can't. They can't walk away from this because the connection is too strong. So it's kind of starting to become a burden to them. They wish they could walk away from this. They wish they could. I don't think this is coming to an end, though. I don't think it is. Not in April. Is there any advice? <clears throat> is there any advice? Hangman reversed. Mmm, <clears throat> man, not a sword reverse. Two of swords. Okay. Hmm. You know what? Okay. At some point, we have to jam a stick in the wheel of the toxic cycle, right? For those of you who are in a relationship or dealing with somebody where you keep getting caught up in these toxic, nonsensical, chaotic arguments and problems, right? And it goes nowhere. You ever, you ever been in that situation? where we just get caught up in this, this fight that goes nowhere. And especially as an air sign, you may, you may be thinking that, well, okay, well, the, the solution to this problem is to logically, analytically come to the most logical point possible to find the solution. But very frequently, with a situation like this, the more logic and reason you try to bring to the table, the more they'll fight against you. So here's what you do, okay? Just try this. I'm not saying this is the end-all, be-all solution to everything, but try this. When you find yourself going back and forth with somebody in the, one of these illogical, irrational, crazy arguments, stop and say, okay, what can I do right now to make you feel better? What can I do? What's something that I can do right now? Enough, enough of the arguing. Who did this? Who did that? Whose fault this is? Who fault? What can I do right now to make you feel better? Hit them with that. Hit them with that. If you're dealing with a person who can't give you an answer to that question, you know what that means? That means they don't want to find a solution to the problem. Because if you're dealing with somebody who wants a solution to the problem and you ask them, what can I do to make you feel better right now? What would make you happy right now? If they can't answer that, that question, it's time to go. Oh, you can't answer that question? You don't know. You know what you're so mad about. You know what you're so upset about. You know what you want to bitch and complain and argue about. You know what you don't want. You know what makes you mad but you don't know what would make you happy? You don't know what would make you feel better? That must mean you don't want to be happy. You don't want to feel better. You don't want there to be a solution to the problem. You wanna fight, you wanna argue, you wanna complain, you wanna bitch, you wanna whine, you wanna moan. So that's a good way to test to see where, where is the person that you're dealing with. Where are they? What's what's going on here? Are, are we ever going to get to a solution to this problem? 
Because eventually, to see that, that's like a house of cards, dude. That energy is only going to sustain itself for so long. Only going to sustain itself for so long. So, we need to have a conversation, though. Need to have a conversation with this person. And sometimes it helps to just be the, just try, just once, just try to be the bigger person and do whatever it is that they want. To say, okay, whatever it is you're upset about, okay, let me just do whatever it is that you want. And if that doesn't make them happy, that is a very clear indication that they don't want to be happy. That's a very clear indication that they are purposely creating the problem. And if they're purposely creating the problem and there's nothing that you can do to fix it, you might be thinking, you might want to ask yourself, is this a situation I really need to be in? Is this somebody I really need in my life if we're not going to find solutions to our problems? Just play with that. Play with that a little bit, okay? That may not sound like much, but I'm telling you, try it. It'll tell you a lot, okay? All right. I feel like those were the messages that my Aquarius friends needed to hear. So I am going to go ahead and end this video here. Thank you all once again for tuning in and playing along. Don't forget to check down there in the description of this video if you would like to find out how to schedule a personal reading. And speaking of personal readings, y'all, tomorrow, the 18th of April at 11 a.m. Pacific time, we're doing another round of the $22.22 live mini readings. So if you go to my website, tarotwithrich.com, and you click on personal readings, that is an option that's now open and available. You can read all about how that works down there on my website, okay? All right, I'm going to get out of here now, y'all. I wish you love, luck, light, and prosperity on your journey.